Yo boys, welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about Victor Oladipo and the Houston Rockets potentially trading him at the deadline for... That's a question mark, to be honest. We don't know what they're going to trade him for. But they're open to the idea. This came to the surprise of many Houston Rocket fans in... To me, it really doesn't because he's on an expiring contract. When we acquired him, there were reports and rumors about him wanting to be in Miami, about him not wanting to play for us. And although he said those weren't true, they are. Victor Oladipo wants to win. He wants to be in Miami, whether or not he'll say it in a press conference. I mean, I'm not saying that I was told by Oladipo. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that the Rockets know that if they can get the right offer for Oladipo, they'll trade him. But if they can't, then... They'll keep him and try to extend it. But right now, do you want to pay Victor Oladipo $100 million? I mean, I'm not going to say just because he shot 8 of 24 last night. That's not the reason. It's more of just, is he that guy? Is he a star, man? Can he take us to where we need to go? And that's to an NBA championship. Because if you're a Rockets fan, getting to the playoffs isn't good enough. It really, I don't care if James Harden was here a couple months ago and we made it to the playoffs and proved everyone wrong. If we don't win the championship, then we still didn't win the season. And that's what we're trying to do. So how can we actually get to the NBA Finals? That's going to be able to acquire as many assets as possible and then try to trade them for stars or try to draft stars. So right now we have a 25-year-old Christian Wood, a 30-year-old John Wall, and a 28-year-old Victor Oladipo. If we don't win in the next two to three years, we're not winning. So I would take Oladipo and I would trade him for a star such as Mitchell Robbins. I can't say a star. Okay, a young, a good developing up-and-coming young player. Mitchell Robinson and Tyler Hero. Now... First of all, there's been a lot of people, even Miami fans, like I looked on Twitter, I know it's Twitter, but I looked on Twitter to see Miami's reaction to Victor Aldipo, to their fans, what would they be willing to give up? I try to do that as much as possible for getting on a video because I don't want to make a video and say this and that if it has no chance of happening, right? And Miami Heat fans want Victor Aldipo. Now, are they willing to give up Tyler Hero is the question, and I think they are. I can't definitively say that they are, but after losing out on James Harden, after starting the season so poorly... I think that Miami would be willing to give up Victor Oladipo for Tyler Hero. Now, I know he's going into free agency and they could pick him up there, but that's that's a lot of wait and see kind of thing. If you can get your hands on Oladipo right now and make a push for a playoff spot, I would do that. It's the same with the Knicks. If the Knicks get Oladipo, he's a star that they haven't had in a while since Porzingis. I mean, the Knicks right now don't have any stars. I mean, Julius Randle is a good player, but he's not Victor Oladipo when he's healthy and playing within a system. So... If they get all Depot, he helps them make a push to a playoff spot. And even if they get knocked out in the first round, if I'm the New York Knicks, I haven't made the playoffs in a very long time. I just want to get in, man. And again, the Knicks have the money to sign him. I don't see why Victor Aldipo would be like, I'm not playing for the New York Knicks. First of all, they have a good culture, a ton of fans. They played in Madison Square Garden. It honestly would be a blessing for Aldipo to take his crew to New York. So that's what I would do. I'm not trading Victor Aldipo for a first round pick. Two first round picks I'll do because you look at what we did with the, the Blazers, right? We traded Robert Covington for two first. We we also got Trevor Reza, but again, if you can get two first round picks, I mean, you have to take that. Picks are very valuable, man. Very, very valuable. Even if they're not good picks, you could still flip them. I mean, you look what the Lakers did, right? They traded a first round pick for Dennis Schroeder. And look what that's turned them into, man. He looks really good this year. Now, he's not popping off or anything, but he's definitely a good player for them. You ask anyone, even Chris Paul has a lot of respect for, for Dennis Schroeder. He's a good player that's in his prime. So, Again, the Rockets, they have this team that had been playing well. They did lose to the Thunder. They didn't beat this super power team. I mean, they beat the Blazers, who were banged up, and then they beat the Pelicans. But again, it still wins. Like, I'll take those wins any day. The issue is, a lot of people are starting to see somewhat of the true colors of the Rockets. I mean, John Wall didn't play last night, and there was a comment that actually got a lot of likes on my video, and it said that they need to stop babysitting John Wall. But people need to understand, if John Wall plays in a back-to-back -back and gets hurt, his career is over. Like, if John Wall gets another surgery, he's just not going to be that same guy. Like, right now, we're seeing the best of John Wall that we ever will. The next one, two years is the best that we're going to see of John Wall. And you can tell. I mean, the dude looks electric out there for the Rockets. But again, they're not babysitting him. They're being cautious because he's injury-prone. John Wall has been hurt throughout his entire career. And why does he get injured? Because he plays so hard. He's always flying around, always landing. You guys see when he drives in, he'll fall down. I mean, to this point, he knows how to control that, but 
it just takes that one sudden movement, man, and you're injured. So as much as I like John Wall as a leader, especially off of the court, you can't really rely on him and Oladipo. And the Rockets have to know this. They have Christian Wood, who, again, needs to be more involved in the system. So if they get a star, he can't be this ball-dominant Russell Westbrook type player. He's got to be able to play within the system and be able to give Christian Wood the ball. So that's why you guys have seen me mention Lonzo Ball of the Rockets, Mitchell Robinson. Does Lonzo Ball need the ball in his hands to make plays? No, he doesn't. He's a good defender, rebounder, can knock down open shots. I mean, he loves to pass. Mitchell Robinson, what does he do? A lot of people don't even know him. There were a lot of Rocket fans that were like, yo, who's Mitchell Robinson? And basically what I told him is he's this seven foot freak that can jump out of the building. He's going to block shots and he's not afraid of anyone. If the Rockets make the playoffs as, let's say, the eighth seed, right? They trade all Depot, they pick up Mitchell Robinson, and they make the playoffs as the eighth seed. And let's say the Nuggets or the Utah Jazz get the first seed. The Rockets generally can win that series. As long as Wall plays in every game, Mitchell Robinson can defend Gobert. He can defend Jokic. That makes a lot of the game easier for Christian Wood because if he doesn't have to guard Gobert or Jokic, well, first of all, who's guarding Christian Wood? And second of all, he's not going to have to spend so much energy on defense in the playoffs. It's a game of stops, man. If you can't get stops, you're not winning games. So imagine Christian Wood. Let's say they're playing the Nuggets, right? So, okay, Christian, you're going to go guard uh, who? Michael Porter Jr.? Who's their starting power forward? I can't even remember. I'm, I, Jeremy Grant's obviously not there anymore. But let's say the Jazz, like Royce O'Neal or Bogdanovich or something. I mean, I, I don't. I think Royce O'Neal's their power forward. Maybe I definitely got to get my knowledge up on that. But let's just, you guys know what I'm saying, right? Like, Christian Wood is going to be guarding this guy. He's not an all-star type player. I mean, Porter Jr. is definitely has potential. But right now, I think Christian Wood can do a pretty good job in it, man. So that's going to make it a lot easier. I mean, Oladipo, we know that he's a star. He's obviously better than Tyler Hero right now, and he's better than Mitchell Robinson. But we have guards. We have Mason Jones and Kevin Porter Jr., assuming that he actually plays this season for us. If he doesn't, I wouldn't be surprised just because he hasn't played in a year and the chemistry would, might get messed up if he comes in. So we also have a guy such as like a Ben McMore type player. Maybe we bring back Joe Green. So we don't need any guards. We really don't. And John Wall, to this point, I'm okay with him staying. Like, if you asked me this a week or two ago, I would have been like, absolutely not. If you can trade John Wall, you have to do it just because of everything I just named. But I actually really am liking John Wall, especially after last night. Without him, we just aren't a good team. We're worse than the Thunder without John Wall. Just because he's that guy. He sets guys up, man. He plays hard. He plays good defense. He is our offense, and he is our defense because he's a two-way player. So, to this point, man, Victor Oladipo is good, but are you going to pay him $25 million a year a 28-year-old injury-prone guy that's not playing back-to-backs that has these off-shooting nights. I mean, guys, he's shooting 39% from the field with the Rockets, and I want to say 31 from three. He hasn't been that great. So uh, you take a look at Bleach Report. They were, to my knowledge, the first to report this news, at least. I mean, it definitely came from, I believe, Kevin O'Connor. I don't know. That was Kevin O'Connor's report was that he didn't want to stick around in Houston. But that I don't think that was necessarily true. I mean, I don't know why he'd lie, but, like, when Oladipo got traded here, maybe he was like, yo, I don't really want to be in Houston, man. Like, I want to be in Miami. But once he got here, he, he was enjoying himself. Like, you look at Oladipo, he's playing hard, man. He took accountability for the loss last night after just a, a dreadful shooting night. So, man, things are looking really good. It's just to this point where if I'm Rafael Stone, I'm trading anyone that I can for assets. You look at John Wall, if there's an offer that I can't turn down, obviously I'm taking it. Same with Oladipo, man. You want to get younger, you want to get assets, so that in a couple of years when LeBron James out of the league and Kawhi Leonard may, might be, not be in the Clippers, or like Kawhi Leonard's going to be good for the next like four or five years because he's only 28, but you look at all these teams, man, they're going to get worse. So if the Rockets can just be a team in like two years, like wait two years out, and then that's when we're going for it, we'll have all these assets to work with if you want to bring in someone. So that's what I would do personally. Yeah, this is fun. Six games in a row, it's fun to win. It obviously helps the channel and everyone's having a better time, but... If you can't win the championship, and the Rockets obviously can't win the championship because they're going to have to go through the Lakers or the Nets, and the chances of them beating them are slim to none. Like, I'm more likely to drive a Lamborghini and date a supermodel than the Rockets are to beat the Nets or the Lakers in a playoff series. Like, we all know that. So, I would definitely trade Victor Oladipo if the price is right. But if it's not, like, if they're offering us a late first-round pick for Oladipo, obviously I'd keep him and just bring him back. But if there's an offer for Mitchell Robinson or Tyler Hero, I'd do it. It's your boy Swag signing out, guys. Have a great one. Peace.